This video is sponsored by The Wandering Tavern, a TTRPG setting notably inspired by Studio Ghibli works like Laputa and Spirited Away, just in case you couldn't tell by the art. It's an enormous floating city, creatively constructed and applied to 15 different battle maps, dozens of plot hooks, characters, secrets, skyborne spirits, and the coolest thing that you could add to any project. An STL file for the entire city tavern thing. This supplement can be applied to any tabletop system, but has provided stats and rulings for 5th edition. As with any good tavern city setting, they've also got cooking recipes for the table, a wealth of downtime activities, and in-game back alley drug deals for your characters to get crunk on stolen sky spices. The Kickstarter should have launched the moment that this video went up, and they have a huge discount for the first 24 hours if you got here early enough. Click that link, check out the Kickstarter, and support Homie and the Dude if you're interested. Mind flayers, owl bears, beholders, all these things and a few more have stood as the proverbial pillars of Dungeons and Dragons since they were created, more or less from scratch, by the father of my career, Gary Gygax. But I have never in my life seen a 100% original idea that doesn't pull inspiration from existing stuff. Heck, I'm actually pretty sure that we made boats by trying to copy ducks. Those proud little bastards can fly, too. That only took us about 9,900 years longer to figure out. But we did it. In my video on Beholders, I found some source saying that someone had a dream about them and that's where they came from. But, thanks to Gary Gygax's countless Q&As, I learned that a guy named Terry Kuntz told Gary, what if a floating eye so then Gary and Terry kissed and the Beholder was born. Mind Flayers are actually one of the more original ideas, and although they evolved to become Lovecraftian, one of their cited inspirations was a variant book cover with tentacles coming from underground. But I said owlbears at the start of the video because they, among a few others, have my favorite origin story. While they were playing Chainmail, which was the imperfect larval form of what would later become Dungeons & Dragons, Gary put a big pile of sand on the table for his players to fight him. That's a thing they used to do, I guess. But then he left the building, skipped down the sidewalk gleefully with change jingling in his pockets, and he stopped at a dime store. For Zoomers here, that's what we had before Five Below, which came after dollar stores, but now dollar stores are five dollar stores. Anyway, he rushed into the front door excitedly, zoomed down the aisle to the toys, and there he saw. It. One of those plastic bag sleeve things with like six toys in it, all of which were nearly amorphous monsters that barely resembled monsters from, I think, Ultraman? They were either Ultraman knockoffs or made up dinosaurs from a little factory in Hong Kong. Then Gary raced home, threw all of these creatures in the sand, and asked his party, What the hell are these? Together they made generalized stat blocks for all of them, and designed the lore later. I want to run through all the ones that they mention in some interviews from that bag, starting with the Boulette. Designed by Tim Cask, Gary's first employee, this creature was called the Bullet at the table because it looks kind of like a cased bullet. After an ad page dropped in the Dragon magazine, he had to start his idea for a weekly monster post a week earlier than he planned. He ended up designing it in the middle of the night while watching Saturday Night Live. The creature's plan title was going to be the Boulet, and I learned that the Boulet's nature that we have today, in his own words, was partially inspired by the skit about a land shark candy gram. Candy gram, my foot! You get out of here before I call the police! You're the shark and you know it! Wait, I, I'm only a dolphin, ma'am. A dolphin? Well, okay. <laughs> And now they swim through the dirt in Baldur's Gate, because of land sharks. The owl bear is a weirdly simple one, which is why to this very day, in lore, we don't really know why they exist. They just looked at this pile of toys, started giving the creatures random names, and slapped stat blocks on top of them. And this one kinda looked like an owl. Bear... thing. And now it's an evil owlbear genetic experiment, and that's that. I don't know why they never addressed his fucking bowl-cut red leaf hair thing. I also love that they didn't even remotely change the designs for these creatures. The sketches are one to one. Which is interesting, because I learned the Umber Hulk, the Purple Worm, and the Carry On Crawler also came from that dime bag. This is the only image set I could find, so I guess we have some missing lore. Unless this hat guy thing is the Umber Hulk. Eh? The Rust Monster was one of the last to make, since the slimy little dude with antenna and a propeller didn't scream dangerous. Unlike the fucking owlbear, I guess. But nonetheless, genius struck Gary like a lead pipe to the back of the head, and he decided that it would terrify the party by destroying anything they had with iron in it, becoming the Rust Monster. 
During playtesting, Gary noted that it taught the party to completely change their tactics while fighting it, which I imagine is what you want when making a combat game. It's actually really cute that in the illustration they have it rusting the border next to it. One of the sources I looked at assumed it was based on Kemular from Ultraman, but that feels like an enormous stretch. The bag said prehistoric creatures, so these are all obviously naturally occurring dinosaurs. Making this video inspired me to head out to my local Dollar Tree and see if I couldn't get as lucky as old Gary himself. I couldn't. The Dollar Tree toys have upped their game and it was hard to find ones that didn't look like anything. But here's my haul anyway. It was like eight fucking dollars. I had to take out a second mortgage to make this video. I got six items consisting of three dinosaurs, a horrifying rubber chicken, and two final faction toys. One of which I'd realized as an accessory for a different guy. I want to start with the rubber... I'm not sure that this is a chicken. Let's call this creature the Greemer. Here's my vision. They're one foot tall pests that travel through the underdark and overgrown forest in packs of 15 to 30. They hunt by spreading out, finding prey, and screaming to alert the group once they do. As they start to gather around, they begin to hum like a Gregorian chant until their unified voices start dealing psychic damage. Also, this isn't a hat, it's a defensive growth that deflects downward attacks. Mario drew this one and I told them that they have to have thick asses and no arms. Next is this Sarolophus thing. It has huge eyes, a little head node, and a, a butthole. I'm gonna roll with it. Let's call it the Stink Spark. It produces excessive amounts of ammonia from its gland, and it coats its body in this concentrated fluid, causing ammonia gas to fill the air around it. When endangered, they'll slap their back with the node to ignite their flame-resistant bodies. I got this little guy just because he looked like an iguana spinosaurus thing. I don't know, it'd be cool if it were like a lava elemental that uses its spines to boil the water that it swims in. Call it the lava stack lizard or the geyser spine or something. I don't know. Last from the dinos is this ridiculously anxious looking guy with a tail that I thought was the rust monster. I was wrong. Let's just make him pitiful, where all the spines on his back are a little valuable food source that it cultivates for itself. This creature will use its tail to tend to these nodes and flick them into its own mouth. But the problem with it is that anyone who sees this creature is going to try and steal them, so it hides during the day. I kind of want to call it the Bonbon and say it tastes like bonbons. Now for these ridiculous things. I, on the back it says there's a cartoon, so uh, let's go ahead and watch some. Uva! Brutes, drones, and... Whoa! at three o'clock! Okay, that's enough of that. I got the accessory thing, because I first saw it as a little guy with feet, so I put them together and we were doing this. Like with the boulette, I actually had a friend help me with this one. Thank you, Mario Sack. You're a true... You're true. It's called the Thembler. It roots itself into the ground and vibrates to create difficult terrain. Then the Thembler fires bursts of acid from its headstalks in every direction, pre-digesting the prey that it's already knocked over. Then it uses its feet, guns, to soak up that nutrients. It's otherwise super stealthy. This Mauler thing is pretty cool. It really reminds me of the Dark Maker bot from Jack and Daxter. In that cartoon we just watched, it looks like it shoots sound or something, so I want to make mine have a tractor beam instead that sucks up people and creatures into a dimensional belly. Obviously, this is an aberration. I'm gonna call mine the Star Assimilator. Anything it manages to digest can then be spit back out as different aberrations depending on their alignment, like Star Spawn or Flumps or Grell, so it just makes armies as it eats. That's it, I'm done. This was super fun, it ran a little long, so I'm gonna wrap it up here. If you know the toys that inspired the purple worm, or the th other things I didn't find pictures of, please tell me where you found them. Also, what you thought of our new monsters, or if you've done something similar to this. Or just go do that, and like the video. Goodbye. <laughs> that was too graphic. <laughs>